We come back with Minister Ng Chi Meng on Money FM 89.3 and we pull the curtain back on the man behind the press release. Now, we all know that he's had a vaunted career in the SAF, becoming our CDF. So what happens when a pilot retires? Do you ever miss flying? Well, <laughs> a fighter pilot never really retires. We just fade. You fade. Okay. Is that a flying reference? Well, not quite. It's just one of those ego things that we say oh, as, fighter pi- as fighter pilots. As fighter pilots. <laughs> no, but I'm wondering, uh, you fly something as, uh, you know, it's, it's such a precision machine. It's got, it, it's got such speed and accuracy and, and all that. Uh, is even driving boring to you after that? No. No? It's really? still fun. It's still fun? I, I, I try to find fun in all the things I do. Okay. Whether it's at work, whether it is a simple, pleasurable trip home, driving, mm-hmm. to flying and sports. Right. Uh, generally, I'm a optimist, I think, in outlook. All right. So let's talk about the man, Chi Ming. You have had an amazing career. You, have, you were the Air Force, you were CAF, you were CDF. Were you one of those boys as a child? Did you play with toy planes? Did you always want to be a pilot? Yes. Yes. Yes, always. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, yes. I can tell you that in my earlier years, probably one, mm-hmm. I think maybe the second composition, in those days they call it composition, mm-hmm. your ambition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was very clear to me. I wish I kept the exercise book. My ambition was simply to be a fighter pilot. A fighter pilot. So you've, uh, you weren't just hoping to be a pilot. You wanted to be a fighter pilot. Absolutely. As a child, what did that mean to you? What was a fighter pilot? I'm a girl, so I have no such ambitions. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, fighter pilot, you know, you are at the top end of the profession. Right. The excitement of taking an uh, all powerful jet into the sky, mm-hmm. you know, doing what little boys dream of when you grow up, you're mm. a macho man, you know, defending your country. All the so you things. rewatched Top Gun the movie how many times? I, th- I think twenty something <laughs> times. And you must remember, I went to the Air Force Academy. Right, of course. So yes, there were you did. reinforcing messages in the Air Force Academy, even though messages. it was a Navy movie. And we, okay, so they were Navy pilots. Yes, because the, they do have them in the US, right? That's right. All right, and you were a Air Force pilot. Yes. So are Air Force pilots better? <laughs> well, in Singapore, I can say it. Definitely, <laughs> because all F, all pilots in Singapore in the military are Air Force pilots. Are Air Force pilots? Right. Uh, it was it was an ambition, and uh, it's one of those things that you cannot explain you why can't. a young boy is just enamored with this profession. Where in the old days we have trump cards, mm-hmm. we have our Airfix, Tamiya. Yeah. All these. So, so did you play with those? Did what? you make the models? I don't anymore. Okay. The most recent uh, things. I made a uh, Lego X-Wing fighters. X-Wing f- No, that's Star Wars. Yeah, that's Star Wars, but okay. yeah, well, it's, just, it's just a fighter pilot in space. All right. In your imagination. And those things were Father Day's gifts. Right. So it was, it's, it's, it's still in some part of me, uh-huh. that, that boy that looks out to the skies and want to go fly it. Mm-hmm. I, I think I still find a lot of uh, joy all right. In taking to the skies, even in a commercial airplane. Ever considered flying a commercial airplane? Uh, no, <laughs> no. All but right. I, my roots started in the junior flying club, mm. and recently I went back, and uh, I went back to say hello to some of the students, encourage them on, and I okay. took a flight. Okay, it's still fun. So you're talking pipers and stuff like that. Yes. Okay. Something like that. And that's, but that's really flying, isn't it? You don't have all the instruments. It's really just a very basic plane. It's not a multi, multi-million dollar fighting plane. Well, a fighting plane, the, the best part of it is actually the combat. Right. In, the dog I, fights. Yes. Okay. I think that lends a lot of excitement. All right. Okay, I'm starting to understand you a little bit. Now, you've hinted at this on your social media post. Are you a Star Wars fan? Yes, I am. <laughs> I am. Absolutely a Star Wars fan. Absolutely a Star Wars fan. Who's your favourite character? Well, it's, it's one of those strange, strange things that uh, a villain mm-hmm. has become the most popular character. You're going to tell me Darth Vader? Indeed. 
<laughs> it is one of the strange things, right? I don't think in any other franchise would you have the... the he the, was the coolest character. Oh, I haven't I found so. the explanation for it yet. No? Yeah. I think that he was the coolest character. First of all, he had the coolest outfit. So I'm looking at it from the point of view of a girl, right? <laughs> he had the coolest outfit. He had the coolest voice. And when he spoke, he had the most commanding presence. So to me, I, I can perfectly understand why Darth Vader would be popular. And the bad guys always have more fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that either. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't agree with that. <laughs> All right, let's get behind you. You were very, very driven from a very young age, apparently. You knew very clearly in your head what you wanted to be, and that's what you were. So today, the Ang Chi Meng that sits in front of me, what drives you today? Today? Yes, today. I suppose as a politician. Okay, as a politician. Four simple words. Mm. For Singapore, for Singaporeans. Okay. I've, said that, I've said that when I was in the SAF, SCDF, rallying our troops. You know what? What would? What makes you come back twenty four seven? What makes you stand in front of your men, ready to do the utmost mm -hmm. of even spilling your blood for your country? Well, it, it must be for a noble mission, mm -hmm. and it, it is for Singapore for Singaporeans. Simple words, simple ideals, but if you were to live it out then it will give you that internal motivator and engine right. yeah, to serve. So that leads me to my next question, which is for me, the, the only question I really wanted to ask you of all the others, which is, you spent an entire career in the SAF. You started out, it's your first job, right? Yes. The SAF. Yes. And when you retired from the SAF, you could have gone into a cushy private sector job. Why did you choose? to continue to serve Singaporeans? Well, that's a very good question. In, in fact, if I were to, to really pull back the curtains and let you into my thinking, mm -hmm. you know, before you retire from the SAF, you know there's a certain date that all of us yeah. will go relatively young. Well, there were three real options for me. One, continue in the civil service. Two, come out, as what you say, into private enterprise. Mm -hmm. And... The third one is to go into social enterprises and see what you can do in a different area to mm -hmm. contribute to society. So, well, politics came as the fourth option that one did not really consider. Okay. And the reason why eventually I stepped into politics together with my wife's support was for the four words I mentioned. For Singapore, for Singaporeans. So you felt you still had something you could contribute to the country and to the people? Yes. As far as I'm, uh, as long as I'm useful mm -hmm. to my country, I will do my best to do that part and give back to society what it has given me. My background, well, probably middle class, three room flat to five room flat mm -hmm. in my parents' days, I could have never afforded to go overseas for my education, right. neither my brothers. So, you know, you look at the whole journey of realizing my ambition and you see how Singapore has developed. And then from my own background, after celebrating 100 years of my school mm -hmm. uh, founding, well, what do you do at 40 plus reaching 50 to live the second half of your life in a significant manner? Right. Well, my wife and I, we decided that, well... This is what she would support me to do. Okay. And that becomes very important, isn't it? You, you need uh, the support. Uh, yes, very <laughs> much so. <laughs> I can't imagine being able to do your job with all its challenges without the support. So we're very grateful to Mrs. Um. I'm going to ask you something um, that might be, you know, something that is very easy to answer or very hard to answer, depending on the kind of person that you are. Now, you've already indicated that you look for fun when you can find it, you know, driving your car home and stuff like that. How hard is it for you to push away from the job at the end of your day and be chiming the person? 
Because I'm, I'm going to assume it's a 24-hour always-on-call, something might be happening that you need to respond to type of situation. I think it's increasingly difficult. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like to think that I can do it, but my wife tells me that <laughs> if you're not, you're getting worse and worse at it. Ah, okay. One of the things we do as husband and wife, we try to reserve some time. Sure. So either late at night when I come home, she would wait for me to have something to, some fruit together. Mm. Or we start the day together for breakfast. Sure. Uh, in recent times, she's telling me that you are, you are not very focused. On the conversation? <laughs> <laughs> Especially at breakfast. Right. Well, so I, I think it is becoming a bit more difficult. But uh, I think that's how things are in different times of the year. Mm-hmm. It is something that I think most of my colleagues go through as well. Sure. It is something not entirely accurate to say it's stress. Mm-hmm. I would probably say it's more the burden of responsibility sure. that you cannot switch off. We've had um, interviews with other ministers. One of them talked about an average day and his particular average day would span 12, 16 hours easily. And I think that is actually important that Singaporeans realise how hard our leaders work for us because we don't know that. And more of you should let us in on, on that behind the curtain scene because I think we would appreciate what you do so much more if you did. Well, <laughs> <laughs> join me for a walk around and then you can report it. Speaking of walking around, when I was doing uh, my research on you, I, of course, went into your social media. Yes. And there is a video of you on a morning walkabout with some uh, elderly residents singing, I think, Hokkien songs. Yes, (laughs) I remember that. So you clearly have um, an affinity with our silver generation. Why? Well, because I like (laughs) respect. Mm. The elderly, mm. I love kids. Mm. And as I said, one of the highlights of the day is really to interact and talk to different people. Right. And that's why when you say it's 12 to 16 hour day, sometimes I don't know whether it is all work. Mm-hmm. On that Sunday morning, taking a stroll in Pasir Ris Park, if I remember correctly, mm-hmm. what I remember was that I hear some singing. Mm. Hokkien. Some ladies, yes. Some yes. older ladies, yeah. <laughs> so I just decided to drop backwards right. and join them for a chorus. It's amazing you knew the song. Well, we are from the SAF. <laughs> and that is a song that we sing. <laughs> that is a song that you sing. Or at least the Air Force squadron that I, I went to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it, it is quite natural. Uh, is that work? I don't know. It depends. Ah, so then it comes to what is defined as work. If it's yeah. fun, is it work? Yeah, so... So if you ask me, just now you say my first job in the SAF for 30 years. Mm. In fact, I, my rejoinder to you is that I enjoy every day of it. Right. It is my passion. I wanted to be a fighter pilot. Mm-hmm. I'm glad the government paid me. To have fun. To do the things I like. <laughs> then you were very, very lucky. Yes, indeed. In, very in, blessed. in that, you were very blessed. Do you do yoga? Do you run? Do you cycle? Do you walk your dogs? What do you do? Because I think it's important that you relax. Of the list you said, I don't do yoga yet. <laughs> yet. The yet. rest of it, I think I do. All right. I'm an outdoorsy person. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like all kinds of sports. And I I still think I'm the best footballer <laughs> in the world when I watch TV. So do you, do you support <laughs> a football team? Yes, of course. Every single minister I've had in this room um, has a football team. What's yours? Arsenal. Arsenal. It, yeah, all right. It's a well-known thing. Mm. I, that's true. I should know that. In fact, some of your colleagues told me, some of the other ministers who are also Arsenal fans told me that it's uh, some, it's on your phone. Um, Arsenal. Arsenal. The, the, somebody said it was your screensaver or something like that at one point. Yes, that's right. My cover. <laughs> oh, your cover. Right. And Mr. Oh, Mr. Minister Ong Kang's Darth Vader. And, and Mr. Ong Kang's Darth Vader. <laughs> that's right. So it's nice to know that you guys actually have a little bit of fun like that and, and you're human on that front. Well, 
whether we are minister. Because I would expect you know the PAP logo or something to be on the back of your phone. Is that some grimace from the editor? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we are products of Singapore. Yes, we are just like any other Singaporeans with our passions, with our worries, mm-hmm. with our challenges as parents. Well. Well, wow, that's who we are. All right. So, nothing surprising there. Nothing surprising. It shouldn't surprise me at yes. all. We come back with more with Minister Ng Chi Meng. I want to find out um, what your vision is for Singapore, what you think the challenges we will face in the coming years are. And those are questions I will ask you on Money FM 89.3.